weekend i went to see um freddie k and devious one player e1 the lady machine was also playing but i missed out on seeing her my main my main priorities were seeing freddie k and um the lady sorry freddie k and devious one devious one i've always had a big a lot of time for because number one he talks really well about dance music about club culture about electronic music in, in general about techno about berlin about the scene about festivals he seems to have very um egalitarian almost utopian views on what the future of dance music could be like and I do like that from him. He, seem, he seems very eloquent and um, very well put together dude. <clears throat> but he's also a beast behind the decks, right? He has a very almost, I like to describe it, mechanical way of mixing. It's like, it's like obviously, I've seen things, most of the time he's playing with three decks, so I maybe kind of helps. But when he's mixing, it's not just him fading out one part that's kind of, you know, on the breakdown and then feeding in the other part. No, he's actually crafting a new sort of soundscape with the tunes that he's basically using at that time. It's really, really impressive to see him in real time. So I just wanted to go see him play, see what the vibe is like and kind of catch it all. I wasn't really aiming to go, to be honest, because um, I was pretty tired that weekend, had, had gym, did a bunch of other stuff, so I was, wasn't really the mood but ever since i bought my fixie it's been a bit easier to kind of pop out to these kind of events and just kind of ride down the ride there was like what half an hour or so from where i lived to kind of go to e1 which is basically in central east you'd call it whopping ish kind of area um so that was pretty easy to kind of go down there and head there um luckily they had a couple of poles just outside the clubs which is nice too um that can kind of rack my bike up at so i could easily pop out in the smoking area and double check it and make sure it's there but for the most part you're not really going to get a lot of people you know trying to pickpocket or break a lock for a bike those kind of early hours in the morning is unlikely uh, maybe if you leave it you know the rest of the day but usually at around you know 2 a.m whenever i was there that's not like it happened so that was pretty easy to do the entry process was pretty easy as well the only thing i don't like about e1 is that they've got an incredible long barricade around the club so when you basically walk down the street you have to kind of walk back around it again to go to the front to kind of go through the barricades and then you go you give them your id to take a picture you get searched you dump your contents into a into a fucking tub they search you like you're going through an airport and then you go through you get you scan your ticket you get stamped it's just like a fucking it's just something you have to get used to in london you have to kind of just zone out but it does kind of kick you out of the of the mood of raving because you immediately feel like you've been accosted especially if you've got some stuff on you do you know what i mean you feel like oh shit you get completely nervous you start climbing up and stuff starts getting worried and start oh start worrying about your people come and they say to me i'm not gonna leave da, 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 da. so it kind of takes you out of the mood of kind of just raving and having a good time which is a shame but hey this is what we have here in london then you go through there's a cloak area cloakroom area that you could use it's pretty handy because they take card because most cloakroom areas i've been to especially in other clubs that usually don't take card it's usually always cash so then you end up having to hold your shit if you don't have any cash use so that was nice then i go in and oh my god e1 might have been one of the most sweatiest and nastiest humidest clubs i've ever been to in my whole life during the summer months it's absolutely rank in there man the level of air conditioning is pitiful pitiful to say the least especially considering the amount like again i don't know operational cost for that kind of place must be high don't get me wrong but still the amount of money they must make on a nightly basis they should be able to afford decent fucking air conditioning please for the love of god and there's a real shame too because he won over the last few over the, the last 18 months or so i don't know who's in charge of the programming or who does the booking or whatever it may be but they've really stepped it up lately because before it used to be full of only like tech housey type nights and really corny cheesy commercial stuff but nowadays they're really doing a good job of mixing like a random night a random kind of boudicca night which is mostly like lgbtq queer type friendly type party and then they've got some really standard tech housey nights and then they've got some really standard berlin type lineups that you would be used to seeing in maybe continental europe that with the lady machine freddie k and dbs1 playing so they've got a real good mix of kind of people playing there on like a weekly basis so it's a real shame that they don't have the air conditioning to allow you to really rave and let your hair down the air conditioning was non-existent there were parts and pockets on the main dance floor which is i think we were in the warehouse bit which has the ward speakers right that looks amazing to kind of see but obviously it's going to kill your ears but there were pockets of kind of good space where you can kind of you know get some air in you but when i went to the front because I, st I stood near the front to see um to see freddie k for a bit i think i've got a video of it here actually where is it um, there we go. Yeah, I've got a video of it here. I'm gonna quickly play for you. If you're watching this via the, if you listen to this on YouTube, you'll just hear it quickly. Let me put it back. 
So, so this is Freddie K, devious one, right? And I'm right near the front towards like one of the left pillars and it's absolutely streaming down with fucking sweat. It's literally, the walls are literally dripping. Yeah, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, but the DJs are so good, it kind of made it worth it. Like Freddie K was an absolute fire. He was tearing that place apart. To see him playing vinyl in that space, knowing how warm it was, knowing how vinyl warps in the heat and stuff and people shaking the stage and the barricades and stuff. And he was able to still mix flawlessly with vinyl. Like absolute maximum respect and props to that guy, man. One absolute masterclass that was to see in real time. Really was phenomenal. And I did my best to kind of see it from all places. I went to the front of the stage to kind of listen to him. I went to the right of the stage to listen to him. I went to the back to listen to him and it was absolutely jumping from front to back. And then, of course, the piece of resistance was flipping DVS1. I've got a clip of him playing too. Let's click that to start. yeah honestly apart from the sweat and apart from the maybe overzealous security guards who to be honest let me just take that back a little bit as much as i think previous times i've been to e1 the security has been a lot more heavy-handed i feel like this time around even though there was a there was a lot of them in there you should have to get used to seeing a lot more you know security jackets around on the dance floor than you would in kind of other parts of europe they weren't that heavy-handed they were basically observing for the most part and i did see a few people being naughty on the dance floor and having bumps and not going to the toilet and being sensible but you know doing that kind of teenage -y. it's a bit embarrassing if you're over the age of like 19 and you're taking bumps with dance floor you need to have a look at yourself do you know what i mean go to the toilet like everyone else does and kind of have some respect for yourself and the people around you but hey people are going to do what they're going to do so i did I, I did see a lot more people doing the dance floor which is usually a sign that the dance floor is a lot more free and less sort of like patrolled and surveyed as it might have been in the past so that was nice but god damn it the drinks prices wow any one a beer and a shot of jägermeister was like 14 pounds i was like god damn that's fucking tough but you know it is what it is for the drink prices but overall in terms of the sound in terms of the lineup of people that played it was superb i just wished e1 would just go a step further and just get some decent air con man like honestly like you can't in this sort of weather be subjecting people to this sort of heat and again the problem with the e1 in general is always warm even in the winter months, it gets really sweaty in there really quickly, which people kind of like, because I guess you get to take your top off. And if you're one of those kind of um, really ripped gay dudes who likes to take their top off and dance around places and whatnot, then it's probably nice. But in general, I'm not a fan of it. I'm really, really not a fan of it. I would much prefer it when it's just cool and you can actually have a good time, hang around and not have to pop out to the smoking area every 10 minutes like I was doing. I was going out there every like 10, 20 minutes to kind of get my, get my, catch, some, catch my breath and kind of go back in there. But every time I went back out there, I could just feel how wet my t-shirt is. Like it was heavy. That was how wet it was. It was fucking heavy. And I obviously like to dance. I don't, you know, I'm not someone that's going to be posted up against the wall, just kind of, you know, me mugging people. I actually want to have a good time. So I was going for it. My t-shirt was covered in fucking sweat, man. And this is the last kind of video that I'll play for you that I took there, actually, new one. And this kind of shows the kind of the scale of the party and how many people are actually in there. It wasn't super, super full, but maybe some one of the fullest I've kind of seen E1 in the wild because it's a really big space. I think that main... If I was if I was going to if I was going to guess, I'd say that main warehouse space in E one is maybe a thousand capacity. Let's see if I can Google this. Um, e one warehouse capacity. Let's see if I can get this out there. I think it's about a thousand people, so it's pretty big. You know what I mean? To have to have it completely full is a bit a bit of a mad one. Let's see if I can find it. E one capacity warehouse. OK, 
okay people are saying um it's 700 to 1600 standing okay 700 ones okay so it's a little bit bigger than than fold as a space and it was pretty decently packed i think So, the, and again, the, the best time for me nowadays, especially with my fixie bike, the best time for me nowadays is going home from the club. I legitimately enjoy it because I literally just get to jump on my bike and just cycle back, you know, sober up with a cool breeze, maybe ca ca grab a quick little McDonald's break and just go home and sleep or shower and sleep. It's so fucking good, man. Honestly, it's the best thing ever. I can't believe I didn't do it sooner. Obviously, when it's other parties where I really want to get mash up and stuff, I don't take my bike with me because I don't want to get into an accident. But for the most part, this kind of party, I had like one drink, you know, I didn't do anything else. I just kind of hanged out for a little bit. And basically that drink didn't do anything because it was just basically hydrating me. It didn't, drink, it didn't make me drunk at all. I just basically sweated it out in basically 10 minutes. But it was a real good time. I really did enjoy it. But again, I just wish they would have actual hair conditioning in there because God almighty, man, it was so fucking hot, so sticky, so nasty. The beer was just on a crazy level. Every time I kept smelling some people and I think someone was stinky, I would think it was me. But then someone walked past, I was like, oh shit, that definitely isn't me, mate. That's like other people. And there were some big burly guys in there. Do you know what I mean? People who sweat for real so that was a real funky place to be in man like pick up everybody that saw in there snogging each other and shit i don't know how you guys do it in that kind of heat with all that stickiness around you but again love is love in it love is love so big up everyone there big up everyone